This video is sponsored by me. I made some stuff I think you guys will really like. The link to the store is in the description down below. Five seven nine, you're good for it. I'm gonna send this to you, so you can go ahead and accept it, okay? This is the Type Six transporter, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. And that's because it's not hard to figure out what the Type Six is for. There's really only so much you can do with what is essentially a cargo rack with an engine strapped to it. So what I should be doing is showing you how to maximize your cargo runs for efficiency and profit, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'll only be making one single delivery to here. Observation Post Epsilon in the Triffid Sector, a few thousand light years from the bubble. Ah, I thought that would be less. Coming in at just over a million credits, the Type 6 is the cheapest medium ship you can actually buy. And that does show a bit. It's meant to be more of a formal introduction to trading, where you can start moving commodities in bulk rather than a few tons here or there. And that means that this has a relatively decent jump range. And if you're willing to strip it down a bit, you could take her out dancing just about anywhere. The reason I can do this is because the Type 6 isn't that bad as an explorer. In addition to the jump range, it's got enough internal slots for all the things you might need. Minus the fighter bay if you're that kind of explorer but more than enough for an SRV bay, an AFMU, a cargo rack, a surface scanner, and an FSD booster. But of course the Type 6 was built as a cargo freighter first and foremost. It's the only one of Lacon's dedicated freighters that can actually land on an outpost. And that right there makes it pretty exceptional. And really it's not that hard to set up a nice trade route where you can make almost a million credits every few jumps. But it is also boring. It's like a cardboard box. It's useful, but just not very interesting on its own. But if your cardboard box can fling you halfway across the galaxy, well, you're gonna do it because you can. Here's the thing about exploration. You hear that something like 98% of the galaxy is unexplored, and you think that there's these huge swaths of open frontier and undiscovered systems. And sure, there are some of those out there, but more often than not, it's going to be these systems that are right next to each other. Ignored because they just got jumped over by someone with a much better jump range. In reality, it's these tiny patches of systems that nobody has ever bothered to visit while they were on their way to someplace they thought would be far more interesting. The irony, of course, is that usually neither system is interesting. I groaned about the jump range in the beginning because like everybody else, I want the most amount of jump distance I can get from my ship. But that's not really the right way to do this. If you're looking for the undiscovered, it's far better to go slow. One small jump at a time. One grueling jump at a time. It might seem like I don't actually like coming out here into the black, but I do. The galaxy becomes progressively more beautiful the further you go from the bubble, and running into things like this feels special. After all, how many people are ever going to see this? How many of these people are going to be in a Type 6? And it is undeniably beautiful here. But that actually has become kind of a problem in a way. As the scenery gets better, I feel like the Type 6 gets uglier. It's getting harder to pretend my cardboard box is anything else. But I will admit that, for once, I am legitimately enjoying a Lacon cockpit. This really is something special. Even if I am remotely sure that these are just stickers. All in all, this trip has taken me just a few hours, but it does feel like it's taken me much longer. I really can't help but wish I was in my Phantom or Anaconda to do a run like this. 
And it's not even that it's been particularly terrible in any real way. The ship doesn't overheat easily. I've got a class 5 fuel scoop, so I fill up relatively quickly. And I have a great view. But it does feel a bit off. In those other ships, I wouldn't ever be paying attention to the jumps I had left, or the distance I've covered. And on the other hand, if I were doing this in a hauler or a DBX, I would have to pay attention to all that. But I still think I'd be enjoying it more. I can't give you a good reason why I'm not enjoying the Type 6. But I think the simple truth is, I'm judging a dog by how well it swims across a lake. It simply wasn't built to do this as well as I want it to. If I'm being honest, I don't actually like the Type 6. I don't like the looks, I don't like the way it feels, but more than anything, what really kills me is I don't have a good reason to hate it. Because it is so useful. This is a million credit ship that can take you across the galaxy without skimping on internals. You can use it to explore uncharted star systems, haul over a hundred tons of cargo, or help start a mining career. It's not particularly useful in any kind of combat, but neither am I. This is a good ship. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why I'd much rather be flying a keel back. So, why did I do this? Well, a couple reasons. Namely, I wanted to see if I could grow to enjoy the T6. As useful and necessary as it is, I could never shake the sensation that I was operating a forklift. A tool built to accomplish a specific set of tasks and promptly forgotten about. And I was hoping a trip out into the stars could change that like taking your stepkid to a baseball game. I thought we could bond. But more importantly, I did this to make a point. You don't need a diamondback to reach outside the bubble. People take Corvettes to Beagle Point, after all. It doesn't matter if it's unfinished or ugly or cheap. That doesn't mean you can't love it. It doesn't mean it's not capable. It doesn't mean that it doesn't do its job very well. And the T6 does. It really doesn't matter if I like this ship. And that's good. Because I don't. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you already have, then thank you again. The soundtrack for this episode is available for free on the Patreon, and you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram using the links below. And hit the like button too, apparently that really helps with the algorithm. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.